obviously Cam is a, a, a big body who uh, can build up speed. And once he gets going, he's hard to contend with. And obviously that plays well when you're a gunner or a receiver. And you've seen him with some run after catch ability on offense. And a lot of those traits are what we saw of him being Gunner, that a, a big player that gets moving is hard to stop. And he, that's why he's hard to block on punt. And obviously, the confidence that comes with making plays, I don't think anyone can ever discount that. So I just think it's a nice blend of his hard work, his confidence and development, and really the, the way at which his teammates and probably the coaching staff viewed him once he started making plays, then there's a mutual trust developed there. And I think that's what happened. Uh, Les? Hey, Nate, it's good to see you. Um, I, uh, you know, something I've always wondered is uh, after a kick or a kickoff or a punt and you're the receiving team, often there can be a penalty. I'm just wondering how much that kills you know, a, a, a special teams coach. I mean, how much you must drill on that, you know, every day. And, you know, can you see, it's been actually seems like there's been some tangible improvement with this team, but I mean, I'm just wondering on those. No, that's a, that's a, a pet peeve plus that on, especially punt return. So our punt return unit this year has been more explosive, but we've had a few more penalties on those returns. For example, in the last game against the 49ers, I believe they were given up five yards of punt return and Steven had a 14 and a 22. We had no penalties. So then obviously you reap the benefits of that yardage, but the penalties that occur on punt return, number one being IBW, which is illegal block above the waist, most of those are a conscious decision by our players to take their hands and put them on somebody's back. And when those happen, that, that's the one thing I have the least tolerance for on special teams is an IBW that you made a conscious decision on. Some, some of the penalties that have occurred on, in the return game this year weren't always, you know, as bad as the, the official may have seen it, but they don't have the benefit of rewinding the film. But it's the number one thing that, that irks me is those penalties in the return game. Thanks. Uh, Sam, then Ben. Hey, Nate. Uh, thanks for doing this. The I wonder if you could kind of explain, obviously when Tress has, has a really good punt, it sets up the, the defense in a better position, but I wonder if, uh, there are certain situations or certain punts that have stuck out to you this year where, you know, Tress has, has maybe, you know, hit it just right or really kind of how punting and special teams can set up and punt coverage can set up the defense in that sort of way. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go as, as thoroughly and quickly as I can. So anytime a punt is punted with good direction, it cuts the amount of field that you have to cover by reducing the, the space you have to cover. The, the more in the middle the ball is, the more field you have to cover. Our guys have landmarks that we're very specific on and we hold them accountable to them. And people are gonna try to, to block you and not let you get to those landmarks. So the, the combination of the location of the punt and the landmarks that our cover players are on while contending with the blocker that's the chemistry of coverage. The ones where you see a, a fair catch, those, those have to do with Tress adding hang time to his direction and maybe our gunners being singled because they're rushing us and there's eight people in the box, which means the gunners are singled. But that's where the blend of hang time and direction producing fair catches and hang time and direction helping our players have less space to cover and our cover players being disciplined and competitive because you got to fight for that landmark. They don't want you on your landmark, and that's the whole struggle. But when they all work together, then you see the benefit of good coverage that goes along with Tressa's good punting. Thank you. Hey, Nate. Uh, good to see you. Um, yes. 
whenever we talk about special teams, obviously we talk about like the obvious, the kicker and the punter, things like that. There's so many other guys though that, that contribute that we kind of overlook or just don't notice. Who, who are a couple of guys is, for you this year that have really kind of stood out with uh, with, with their performance in any capacity on special teams that just you know we haven't talked about? Yes, the obviously the the most obvious to the naked eye would be the gunners. So. The guy, Cam Sims, has done a, a good job and, and since graduated to offense, so to speak. Robert Foster, 19, when he's been active, has been good. Danny Johnson has been consistently good. And then we got Troy Apke back because his role changed on defense somewhat, who was a really good gunner for us last year. So all of those guys have done well. The interior, and, and it's a little bit of a – double-edged sword because when the gunners are singled making the plays usually they're rushing so then the the interior players are more of a protection mode trying to keep tress clean and make sure he can get the punt off and when the gunners are doubled then the interior is going to cover and everyone has to cover so even when we're getting rushed the interior has to cover but that's why when when you talk about the success Tress has, the most important stat is net punt. Well, that any return yardage goes against your net punt and how far he is able to punt it and they run it back. Or if, if he doesn't get a, a punt very far because someone tips one, that affects his yardage. So that's the, a short explanation of those guys. But just in the last game, not to discount anybody, our guards, Jeremy Sprinkle and James Smith Williams, both had tackles. So those guys are, are, you know, the biggest, longest guys we have, and they're down there making, making plays, but really the whole interior of the punt team has done a pretty solid job. Thank you. Uh, we could just open it up. Does anyone else have anything? Hey, Nate, it's John Kine. Um, how much has Tressway improved since you got here, and what specifically has he done better since you've gotten here? You know, that I know, John, that there, there's been a fair amount of rhetoric around that just because Tress has been noticed more and making the Pro Bowl last year. But I would say that really, if you looked at Tress and said he didn't improve at all and he's always been this good, then the players around him have improved, but Tress has improved. But to what degree, I don't know. But I know that the media that covers Tress and anyone that knows him knows that he's a very charismatic, he, he's a, a really good feel player. He, uh, he's not mechanical. He's able to execute game plans and those guys really play hard for him. So I believe that Tress has improved um, just maybe the consistency. I mean, I didn't study him a lot before I got here, only when we played him, but he's been a, a consistent performer and he just elevates the play of the players around him like any good player. And it's, it really is cool to have people take notice of that because not only a quarterback, a point guard, someone like that, that they say, man, this guy makes everyone around him better. But that really is the case with Tress. And so there has been some physical improvement, but I also think that just his growth and his charisma being more at the forefront has, has helped everybody. Hey, Nate. Uh, oh, sorry. Hey, Nate, it's uh, Chris Russell here. Uh, on Dustin Hopkins, I mean, obviously he had the struggles from time to time in the first half, but he's had a resurgence here. Have you noticed anything different, anything that's improved uh, or, or it, was it just like a baseball hitter, you know, that just went through a, a rough streak and he was eventually due to come out of it? That That's a good analogy you just ended with there. Um, here's the way I would put it. There's, there's three people that are involved in the operation of getting a ball through the goalpost other than the protectors. So the snap, the hold, and then as I call hot, Dustin is the last guy on the conveyor belt at the factory. So with whatever Nick does and whatever Tress does, it's his job to, to get that ball through the uprights. So 
consistency in the operation is something we're always working on. And Hop has not changed. And I would say what I've noticed about Dustin is his grit and determination without pressing too hard through the period of time that you're talking about. And I believe the that he just kept going and kept going and eventually it just he emerged on the other side of it. And the thing that I was proud with with Dustin was that even though he missed kicks, he kept it manageable, meaning there hadn't been multiple misses in games. And that's not what we're after. That's not what he's after. But he he had a dogged determination to keep going. So I would say just the the determination to get through it, the work he put in to get through it. And then you can just definitely see that now that he's been in a little more of a consistent role, that that's just helped him a little bit when he's operating. 